Hello. Sure would be nice to see my husband sometime tonight. Matthew, I'm freaking myself out here. No. It's just that when I was outside tonight, I, I thought I felt somebody watching me. And then when I went to unlock the door, it wasn't even locked. You think maybe you forgot to lock it before you left? Well, you were the last one to leave. Oh. Take a look around the house? Are you kidding? I'm freaked out as it is. Oh, you're right here on the phone. Is that supposed to make me feel better? You know what? I'll just see you when you get home. You probably did, leave it unlocked. You know how it is. Just in case of what? Just hurry. I know, I'm sorry. It's just that I miss you and I hate being here by myself. A gift? Yeah. It's bubble bath, isn't it? <laughs> All right, fine. I love you too. Bye. Damn it, Matthew.
guy's name is Matthew Barrett. Uh, says he last talked to his wife about five hours ago. I think she's been kidnapped. Five hours, shit. I don't think I'd even notice my old lady was missing. <laughs> you okay, boss? She look familiar to you? No, yeah. Uh, I'm just tired. She don't look familiar. No. Should she? No. It's just that you look like you've seen a ghost or something. Come on. Rich? I'm fine. You look familiar. Oh, well, we're on television sometimes. Was it TV? Mr. Barrett, please, can we just get through this? I apologize. Uh, no apology necessary. Just, if you would, please continue with what happened tonight. I called her from work. You recall exactly I... what time you made that call? Right at 10. I mean, plus or minus. Could you two have had any arguments recently? A fight, perhaps? Because uh, you've gone to stay with a friend or a relative? No. We never fought. The car is still parked out in the driveway. Now, I've called all of our friends and all of our family here in town. Nobody has seen or heard from her. Well, could she have taken a taxi? <sighs> she, she could have. I, I don't know. We need to call a taxi service just to see if there's been any pickups at this address. Look, do you think maybe one of her friends is covering for her? Now, why would they be covering? I thought you said that you never fought. It's like I told you before. I've been working late. When we talked on the phone, it, nothing was wrong. Everything seemed fine. Do well, you think she would have left without leaving a note? No, I don't. It's not in her character to just leave like this. It's in a woman's character to do whatever she damn well pleases whenever the damn hell she wants. Trust me. No. Not Miranda. Well, let's just suppose that someone did break in the house. How do you suppose they would have got in? When I called her on the phone, she told me that when she got home, the front door was unlocked. But we, we just figured I forgot to lock it when I left. We didn't think anything about it. Is she sure that it was unlocked? I mean, I know I'm sometimes in a hurry. I wouldn't even notice something like that. She sounded sure. I, I don't know. Anything's possible, I guess. Well, when you got home, was the front door locked? Yes. I'm positive about that. Now, how are you so positive? Because when I, when I had talked to her before, she told me that, that she was a little scared. And I came home and was going to try and, and sneak in and, and scare her. I mean, just, just as a joke. But when I tried to quietly open the door, it, it was locked. I had to use my key. And you're certain nothing's missing? No expensive jewelry or anything? Nothing that, that I can tell. I mean, it, if something's gone, then it must be something she had hidden away. I just got word from the lab that uh, forensics has found a sample of blood on the back of Miranda Barrett's bathroom door, along with some chloroform. Chloroform. So she was abducted. Looks like it. There were no prints found and no sign of B&E. I called a cab company. There was no record of the pickup at the Barrett residence. What about her husband? Everything check out on him? Uh, well, his work number's on her caller ID at the exact time he said he called. Security log at his office confirms what time he left. 
He looks clean. All right, man. Got to drain it real quick. Rich, let's be honest. This case is a little too close to home, and I feel very uncomfortable with what's going on here. I understand what you have to do, sir. Now, I call the shots around here, and that's one of the few advantages to being in a small town. If you truly believe you're ready for this case, I want you on it. And if you're not... Can you do that? I told you, I call the shots around here. You sure this is what you want to do? That's what I'm asking you. Do you have your key ready, Ben? Yes, I have my key ready. He doesn't work. Shit. I forgot they changed the locks. I'll get it. To change your locks? When did they do this? Yesterday. yesterday. The beer's right here. Damn it, it won't catch. Some work they did, huh? Could you come help me out with this door, please? What? Nothing. Just call. Who are you calling? Smells good, honey. What are you cooking? Your favorite? Oh, chicken and rice. Okay. My favorite? Mmm, spaghetti again. That's the only thing I can cook. Oh. You know, they say it's the best thing to have after a long trip. Oh, is it? How's the book coming? Mmm, dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Well, 
You know, you'd save a lot of time and money if you just broke down and used that computer upstairs. They do everything for you. Have we not had this conversation a million and one times? They take the integrity out of writing. This. This is real. Hey. All it takes is one power outage or forgetting to press save and all your hard work down the drain in the blink of an eye. This whole thing I can trust. Just trying to help. Isn't that your pasta boiling over? You okay? I just feel a little warm and my joints have been achy. Jesus, hon, you're on fire. Mm -hmm. Have you felt this way all day? No, I was dizzy this morning, but that... Do you need to take something? Mm -hmm. Take these. It's just a fever. Yeah, yeah. I'd do the same if I had mm -hmm. one. Wasn't so bad, was it? Thank you. That's what I'm here for. Cook and clean and take care of my beautiful wife. What's on your mind? Uh, you don't want to know. Come on, spill the beans, bud. You know I don't want to talk about... I know, I know you don't like to bring home what you do every day, all day, but I still want to know. I mean, eight years we've been married, and you still have days that you come home like this. Isn't this a conversation we've had a million and one times? <sighs> Richard, I just want you to know you can tell me when something is weighing you down. I mean, I feel like I can tell you anything. And it hurts me to think that you can't do the same. Yeah, I just think that there's some things that we sh should leave out of our time together. Richard, I'm your wife. Carmen, I'm sick of talking about this. Who is it? It's Clive from the lock shop. Oh, hey. Come in. I've, uh, I've got the part for your doorknob. It's about time I had to sleep with this thing unlocked last night. I'm sorry. Uh, well, your, your landlord just called this morning, so I got here as fast as I could. They just called this morning. I told them about it yesterday. Yes, they just called this morning. Did it shut right when you left yesterday? Well, it... it, it okay. Jill! Where the hell did you put my shoes? I didn't put them anywhere. Are you sure you left them here? Yes, I'm sure I left them here. I put them in your closet before my game the other night. Ben, can you not see that I'm busy? I'll help you find them in a minute after I'm done. Well, can you fucking look for them? Because I have to go. Now. Damn it. I'm sorry. You can be such an asshole sometimes. How about them noodles, Rich? Yeah. Yeah? What the hell kind of thing is that to say a guy asks about noodles? Come on, boss, you gonna eat that or what? No. You want them? Hell yeah. I'll eat that tonight. Don't be wasting that shit. Rich, how about your fortune cookie? No, go ahead. Rich, at least read your fucking fortune. You believe in those things? I played a lot of numbers in the back. I'll read it later. Norris. We're on our way. Good news and bad news. This is Charles Dearborn. 
It's his land. He found the body while tending the area. Is he already wrapped in that blanket when he found her? Yes, sir. I was out tilling and I just kind of ran up on her. That's when I called you boys. She so didn't touch her or move her in any way? No, sir. Not one little bit. Is this your house here? Yes, sir. Anybody else live around here? Well, there's a house about a mile down the road, the old Clive Rudolph place. Clive Rudolph? Oh, you know old Clive? The name sounds familiar. Yeah, he uh, used to own all this land around here until he died about 20 years ago. Who owns it now? Uh, several folks. Uh, some of it's mine. Well, who lives in that old house down the road now? Well, I ain't seen anybody, so I guess nobody with spirits. Has anybody come by here? You seen anybody drive by on a consistent basis? No, sir. Uh, I go to bed at 7. I get up at 3. I'm out here all day. So you're saying the body was placed here sometime between 7 p.m. and 3 a.m., is that right? Yes, sir. Sounds about right. So you'd also say that whoever placed the body here wouldn't be from around here? No, sir. Not 20 miles or so, I reckon. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dearborn. It's been a great help. Please give uh, one of these officers here your full name and contact information, and we'll call you if we need anything. Yes, sir. Joel, take care of it, please. Right this way, Mr. Dear One. Let's take a look. I'll see Grant if you'd roll her, please. <laughs> it's Miranda Barrett, all right. God. Help. That's all? Jesus, this guy's fucking dead inside. Beggar hands. Don't, I'm all pukey. Oh, so?
What time is it? Five to six. It's time for me to get up. Did you get it all out? I think so. Oh, you've got to take a shower. Okay. I've got time. Just relax. I'll make sure you're okay before I leave. I've got a meeting with Kathleen this afternoon. I'll call her. I'll tell her you're sick. No, I've got to go. No, you've got to get in bed and rest. She's my editor. I've got to. Look, she's your friend. I'll call her. She'll understand. She gets sick, too. Friend, yes, but still my editor. Come on. Back to bed. I called Kathleen. She said everything's fine. So you can rest all morning. I feel better now. Good. I'm glad you do. You still need to rest, okay? What else did Kathleen say? said, if you're feeling better tonight, she'll come over, and you can go over the next three chapters. If not, tomorrow's fine. And, she said, you're three weeks ahead of schedule. She loves everything she's read. Oh, yeah? She just says that because we're friends. Oh, I thought she was your editor. She, we're friends, too. See you tonight. I love you. I love you too. Stay in bed. Mm -hmm. A bit cold for you? Just a chill. Well, I must admit, most of my clients aren't too vibrant. It is nice to get an interesting case like this as a change of pace. See the three bags over there? Three legs, all in one day. One more, and I can make a table. All right, you're not here for the occupational humor. You're here for the information. We do have a rather interesting girl here today. How so? I completed the autopsy this morning. Found some rather remarkable things. Now, her fingernails were clean. So she wasn't able to scratch him. No real sign of physical violence, no skin sample. However, it appears that she enjoyed shoving her finger down her throat in her spare time. She was bulimic? Much of the tooth enamel's been removed by the acid. Only a bulimic throws up long enough and often enough to cause that. However, I did find some partially digested food in her stomach, which tells me she'd been fed by her captor. Uh, the body shows no signs of physical violence. Uh, it suggests that he went out of his way to avoid causing physical damage to the body, possibly to avoid causing pain. He did pick a rather tidy means of death. In this case, chloroform. Forensics did find a small amount on the bathroom door where she was abducted, and John Gacy did use it on young boys when he was in the Chicago area. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that level here. Now, detective, Ordinarily, we would have expected the animals to make off with a fair portion. But in this case, larva infestation hasn't even set in, which should be impossible. Except this body had formaldehyde in it. She was embalmed? All bodily fluids have been removed and replaced with embalming fluid. Detective, what kind of a man do you think we're dealing with? One of compassion. She had a shroud, was given some sort of a burial, some signs of respect, but the embalming fluid. Yes, one very skilled in the art of preservation.
so much fucking better if you were never born! Ah! You're gonna burn in hell just like your are Close your eyes. Close them! Give me your hand. Don't look at me. Turn away. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Put it over the burner. Now! You little son of a bitch! I have to be honest with you, Richard. Over the past seven months, I've come to feel more like a friend to you than a doctor. Right now, I'm going to speak to you as both. I do not approve of Captain Flannery's decision to let you be a part of this case. Frankly, I don't understand how you could want to be a part of it. I want this. You've made considerable progress, but to head an investigation like this? Richard, please. It doesn't matter how bad you want it, it matters how ready you are. Well, there was a time when I didn't want to leave my house. Days when I didn't get out of bed. And then somebody asked me, what good would I be if this is what I did with the rest of my life? Who's winning then? I do want you to continue with your life. But to be a part of an investigation like this, much less lead it, Richard, please, I don't see what good it will do anyone. Dr. Parker, for me to not be a part of this case, I'd probably have to move to the other side of the world, and even then, I'd probably find a way to be a part of it. Let's face it, this is what's best. This is my closure. Jesus, you scared the hell out of me. What are you doing up so late? You should be in bed. I tried you at the station today and they said you were out in the field. I was. Why? What's wrong? I tried your cell phone and it didn't work. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my battery went dead again today. I need to get a new one. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Really? Really. Richard, everything's not fine. I miss you. I miss you being home. I miss being able to make plans with you. I don't even know when we can have dinner together. I don't know. No, We're... Richard, I need you at home. I will need you at home. We will need you at home. What? I didn't meet with Kathleen the other morning when I wasn't feeling well. I went to the doctor instead. Richard, I'm pregnant. Are you sure? He tested me twice, and it was positive both times. Carmen, that's wonderful. Why didn't you tell me when you first found out? Richard, I couldn't. You've been up to your eyes busy at work and completely overwhelmed. Oh, come on, Carmen. You always come first, not my job. I didn't want to add to your stress. Compared to you, my job means nothing. Nothing, sweetheart. I know you have a lot going on right now. Oh, and I'd give it all up in a second. Look. I know 
all getting older. But I believe this couldn't have happened at a better time in our lives. I mean that. <laughs> My mom is so happy for us. I figured she would be. Your parents would be too, honey. I know. They're also very proud of their son. How could I be anything without you? You couldn't. Neither could I. through with you and you just walk off what the hell is up with that i told you i don't want to talk about it right now all right listen just tell me what's wrong jill okay tell me what's wrong and then i'll go i already told you you don't listen you did not you wind in the car the whole way here that's all you did well you bitched and bitch that i scratched the paint on your damn car which i haven't even <clears throat> driven for weeks Oh my God, is that what this whole thing is about? Because that is complete bullshit. You know, every time I try and talk to you, you treat me like a complete baby. You don't even listen to a damn word I say, and I'm so sick of it, Ben. Well, you know what? Maybe that's the way that you want to be treated. Just please, get out. No, we're going to talk ben, about this. Ben, let go of me. That hurts. <laughs> You're not going to talk to me? Let go! Such bullshit!
can move past it and forget about it. Are you here? To see you. Why do you want to see me? I guess I miss you. What? I don't know you. I'm not who you think I am. Who are you? Think. Please. Look. What? At my lifeline. You're dead? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Fucked up, man. You gonna be alright, boss? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just... didn't think it'd be this bad. Multiple stab wounds to the torso. Odd lacerations. Looks like a rage killing to me. How about you, boss? That or he put up a hell of a struggle. I'd say a combination of both. Disfigurement. That was the intention made damn clear here. There's no attempt whatsoever to hide anything. Zero regret. No visible signs of remorse at this point of investigation. Look at his eyes. Guy dies with his eyes open like that. He wasn't ready to go. So you think the girlfriend had something to do with this? It's a possibility. The scene looks pretty personal to me. But the strength of it. You think this is connected with Miranda Barrett? Mm. Two young, attractive people either kidnapped or murdered in this town within two weeks. Come on, Rich. Now think about it, Morris. Two weeks. How many murders did we get in this town in a whole year? Now we've got two. The similarities are bigger than the differences. Oh, great. So we're dealing with some psychopath who hates beautiful people. What now? We gotta check out every loser in the last 15 years who couldn't get a date to the high school prom? No, I don't think we're dealing with the simple rage killing here, though. I'm seeing something unique with this one. How do you mean? Well, the different M.O.s. One case you have chloroform. Practically no physical evidence, very clean. But this one's messy. And there's the mixing of the victim's sexes. Yeah, like I said, two different perps. Or one perp with two different motives. He was in a real hurry here. It's not clear at first glance, but if I were to put my chips down, I would guarantee that the victim in this case was an obstacle of some sort. Obstacle? The girlfriend? You think Ben Lincoln was an obstacle to get to her? <laughs> Beast boy. You are a beast. I do. I don't think we're looking at the start of something. Maybe the continuation of something. A serial? Perhaps. Never thought I'd see a serial around here. Came here to get away from that shit. <laughs> well, I better go talk to the parents. Go check out the girl, Casanova. You know, I have to ask you where you were at the time of his death. Again, you don't have to answer this right now if you don't feel you're able to do so. We just, we try to get the, the details when they're fresh. We had just finished a date and came back to my place. This was last night? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'd gotten into an argument, which really wasn't anything unusual for us. He had to go out of town for work the next day, so he left early. And that was really the last time I ever saw him or heard from him or anything. I do have this, though. Anyway, listen, uh, I'll call you when I get back in town. I love you. Bye. And uh, messages. Have you encountered anyone in the last few weeks, months maybe, that you would classify as having strange behavior in any way, either when you're with Ben or when you're alone? No, nothing that I can think of. 
Or at least nothing that would make someone want to kill him. Recently, a young woman disappeared from her home. Her body was found a couple days later. I'm sorry about that, Detective, but what does that have to do with my boyfriend? We believe Ben was killed out of jealousy. <laughs> what do you mean, jealousy? Jill, we don't see a lot of murders of this fashion around here. We have a young, attractive girl missing one week, and then we have the boyfriend of another found brutally murdered the next. It says something. It says a lot. I'm really scared. First thought, I saw her again today. She looks so beautiful. So sad, but so beautiful. The detective came with the news of her wicked lover. She stayed in the house well into the evening hours before coming outside to play. She got in her car and left and headed south on the freeway. I turned off on 7th and she headed on. I decided not to follow her tonight. She's in such pain and expressing such vulnerability that I found myself feeling hurt for her. After what I've taken from her, I understand something that she doesn't. And that is, what I've taken from her is for her own well-being, for her peace of mind. I love her. I won't make the same mistake again. Truly. Second thought. Have you told anyone else about these dreams? Just you. I can understand how a dream representing a certain reality and having such a coincidence with the present situation might allow you to act on it. But come on, Richard, to base your investigation on it? You need facts, hard evidence. I know. Look, it's, it's like she was really there, talking directly to me. <laughs> like a ghost. It's like she knew who I was. Physical evidence, Richard. That's all you can go on. I don't have to tell you this. Look, how do you explain seeing the victim's face before I know they're murdered? I would have to say you're imagining things. Uh, imagining things? I, I see the victim's face in my sleep. I wake up, I go to the scene, and there's their face. How can I be imagining that? How much sleep have you been getting? Are you sure you're asleep when you're seeing these victims? <laughs> what? Come on, Doc, I'm serious. This is what I've seen. I'm serious too, Richard. I'm getting worried about you. I've been worried about you. you. sound like my wife. I sound like someone who cares about you. Is that what you're saying? You're saying that Captain Flannery doesn't care about me? Why would he keep me on this case if he didn't think I was the best man for it? Have you told Captain Flannery about these dreams? Have you told anyone else but me? I never said it was normal. I never should have said anything. I don't know why I did. You told me because you trust my judgment. I do trust your judgment, but... But what, Richard? But now that I disagree with you, you don't trust me anymore? Is that what you're saying? I'm here to help you, Richard. I always have been. If Captain Flannery knew the story I do, he would pull you from the case. We both know that. I don't expect you to believe what I'm telling you. But the fact is, I'm doing just as well in this case as anybody else would be. And if my only fault is not getting enough rest, fine, take me from the case. But I think I'm holding up just as well. I want you to think about whether you should continue with this case. Then come to me with your true thoughts. Then I'll decide what to tell Captain Flannery. I have told you. Just take some time. Honey, would you pass me the blue ornaments? Blue, you colorblind detective. Easy. Honey, look. This is from Dante. It's right after their baby was born. 
You know their baby would be five come this spring. How are they? Dante and his wife. They're okay. He transferred out of sex crimes right after. Tell me about it. Oh, honey, please not now. Richard, it isn't anything I haven't seen or heard before. I mean, it was it was all over the news. Well, then why don't we just let it be? How did you tell them? I, I swear he still hates me for it. I probably told him the worst thing they'd ever hear. Because of you, they can sleep at night. If it weren't for you, that creep could still be out there and do that to somebody else's little girl. You know I'm proud of you, the work you do. I know. You tell me all the time. I just, <laughs> I get so scared sometimes. I mean, I think someone's gonna come to my door and give me news like that about you. I always come home. That guy knew Dante. That could be our little girl. Honey, there's a better chance of you getting in a car accident the next time you leave the house than that happening to us. Does that mean I should keep you from driving? I just don't want to lose you. You won't. I promise. Norris, I need some information. Yeah, 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 I need it right now, though. It gets harder and harder to get them to let us look at this shit, you know what? We practically had to fight the guy to take a peek at this one. What shit, Norris? Hang on a second. Beer? Jesus, are you gonna tell me what you found out or not? What are your horses, Rich? We can settle in some. Okay, did some checking. That old couple from the farmhouse, they didn't just pass on, they were murdered. Wanna know who killed them? Who? The grandson. With a shotgun. Shot the grandmother in the back of the head, then gave the grandfather a dose of the same when he showed up five minutes later in the pickup. Fatal chest wound. Kid was 17 years old. Answer. Was then sent to Jackson County Mental Institution for a period of five years before they let him out. Uh, kid was a minor when the crime was committed. Kid murders his grandparents in cold blood. He gets a slap on the wrist. Fucking bullshit, man. The father left the family when Martin was six. A suspect's name is Martin, by the way. The mother was a raging alcoholic who, uh, oh, thank you, dear. Sometimes beat Martin and in turn took her own life when Martin was 14. 
was then sent to live with her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Clive Rudolph. Full name, Martin Lawndale Alexander. Looks like he's our guy. Perfect. What else do I have? Uh, got some old photos from his childhood. A couple of uh, grade school report cards. How are they? Very impressive, actually. He never got less than an A. Now, one teacher did complain that he was, uh, what did she say, reclusive among the other children. Never joined in with him at recess or anything. Just sat in the swing and read. It's typical behavior for this kind of person. Yep. What? Oh, boss, I didn't even tell you the best part. I'm listening. It seems that Clive Rudolph ran a little locksmith business on the side. Wouldn't you know it that 30 years later it's still in the phone book? Jill? Jill, it's Detective Larson. Are you home? No dice, boss. She's probably out. Car's here, though. Well, she probably went out with friends. You know, they probably picked her up or something. I'm gonna call her cell. How'd you get her cell? I'm a detective. You beast. will never be within my reach. It never was. You're just a little cat! Don't look at me! Stay there! I've failed so many people in so many ways. And I'm, I'm terribly ashamed of who I am. I'm sickened by what I see with each glimpse in the mirror. I'm repulsed by the image staring back at me. It's impossible to disintegrate my birth reflection, but not impossible to cover the one that has been chosen for me. I did not choose this face, nor did I choose who I am. I am a product of hate fed by my family and society. My blood boils at this thought. I thought that I never had a chance, and I never had a, a chance to become. <laughs> that becoming made me what I was to be, what I was to become. <laughs> I can never tuck away the horror inside of me, for what's inside is it's empty. But I can mask it. I'm changing now. Shedding my skin. It's my time to become what I could have never been before. Come on, man. We have a lot of coincidence here. Doesn't matter how much we think all this stuff is connected, we still need some evidence. Yeah, I know that. We can't just keep her in a little plastic... Let's go over to Matthew Barrett's house and see if he and Miranda ever use class services. Be the boss.
remember if you or Miranda ever hired locksmith services from that Clive Rudolph. I remember having the locks done. That was, that was over a year ago, though. I mean, before any of this. But do you remember who did the work? I don't. Why? Well, a locksmith by that name lives in an old abandoned farmhouse near where Miranda's body was found. I could check and see if I have a receipt or something of that kind, but I, I doubt if I'd have anything from over a year ago. Well, would you mind taking a look? Yeah, I, no problem. Just a second. Larson? He was here. No, I saw him. It's all right, Jill. Stay calm. Can you get here as fast as you can? We're on our way. Stay on the line with me until we get there, all right? <laughs> Jill? 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 What's wrong? He's in her house. She is. Thank you. 
one will love you like me. It's like she was really there, talking directly to me. Where are you? I'm not who you think I am. You're dead? I do not approve of Captain Flannery's decision to let you be a part of this case. Well, there was a time when I didn't want to leave my house. Days when I didn't get out of bed. This case is a little too close to home. You sound like my wife. Sound like someone who cares about you. This body had formaldehyde. She was embalmed? You look familiar. Was it television? I remember having locks done. Do you remember who did the work? <laughs> you know what? Thanks, <laughs> Alice.
We will need you at home. Richard, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Memories are all that's left of the past. And some memories never fade. Some fade in an instant. I try to understand how I could have been so blind. There are no clear answers for why things happened like they did. Why she disappeared that way. In the back of my mind, I always held hope in one day finding her but also in the back of my mind, in a place much deeper, in a place much darker, I knew the truth. Through my nightmares, she spoke to me. 
Still she speaks. Each night when I sleep. Each morning when I wake in the cold of my sweat, I see her face staring back at me. That's when the pain comes. Once that brief moment fades and the calm returns, all I can see is her face. Her beauty. Staring back at me. Nothing else. This I must hold forever. Just want to touch your face As you lie there in state But you're so far away Now I see everything Oh, I can cry There's no dream in your eyes There's no stream in your mind There's no passion, no sigh Gone the breath of desire Just wanna touch your face 
face as you lie there and stay but you're so far away now I see everything 